here here with Greg Hackett. What's the deal, man? Oh man, I'm chilling, man. What's good with you? Leaving one gym, going to another. That's all. Right. Day of work. That's all. Right. All right. Um, you're a Philadelphia trainer. Um, we just got the news, the unfortunate passing yep. of uh, a boxing legend, brother, uh, brother Nazim. Nazim. Yep. What's your thoughts on Brother Nazim and his career? Um, brother Nazim, I like I heard about him. You know what I mean? Because of Rocket Tiger, his sons. Um, everybody used to speak, say the twins, the twins. And I never knew Reverend Nazim was who he was until I got the you know, chance to watch him train fighters and um, check him out at the fights. But my first experience with Reverend Nazim, actually, it was my second amateur fight. And he was like coaching me. And I'm like, I thought it was crazy that his voice was as powerful as it was, you know what I mean? Because he was just in the crowd. I couldn't even hear my own coach, you know what I'm saying? And he was like coaching me through the fight. And I, I, I thought he was like a special person for that. Like, damn, for one, he don't know me. He, he this great trainer running around with these national champions. He worked with Bernard Hopkins. You know what I'm saying? Why would he even, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Spend three minutes to even motivate me like that. So I knew he was a special person from there. Um, very passionate guy about what he was doing. Very uh, skillful. Um, he come up. He was an analytical, analytical thinker. He would come up with things to make you react. You know what I'm saying? Each fighter was different, and he understood that. And I mean, I think his career was great, but I don't think, I don't think it was what it should have been. And I say that because I noticed guys like Brother Nazim, myself, who be real with fighters and tell the truth about what they think, about their styles and stuff like that. Fighters don't like that. They like to hear guys who bullshit them. You know what I mean? Who would tell them, oh man, you a great fighter. All you need is a jab. You a great fighter. You know, Reverend Nazim will break your whole shit down. He'll break your whole style down. And he will break down your personality. And he'll break down your habits. You know what I mean? Stuff like that. I think he I think he should have got more love in the game as far as um the big shows. I think he should have been like the East Coast, I think he should have been one of the major guys on the East Coast. And he was, but I think he should just like Freddie is to the West Coast, I think he should have been to the East Coast. But not taking nothing away from who he was. Great person. You know what I'm saying? Great motivator. Do you feel like there's now like a hole in Philly boxing? What's happening is you're losing the guys who who, who are able to pass down the, 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 the science. You know what I'm saying? Hmm. What's going to happen is if, if we don't start connecting with our old heads and talking about boxing, like really talking about boxing, listening to those old stories, getting them old tricks and stuff like that, the, 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 the skill set in Philadelphia is going to die out. You know what I'm saying? That's going to eventually happen because the game is moving so fast now, everybody just want pad work, pad work, pad work. Yeah. That's the game now, pad work, pad work, pad work. Strip conditioning, pad work. But what about the nasty little tricks on the inside? What about the, the, the tricks you need to know in the corner? You know what I'm saying? We got to talk to our old heads. So I feel like when you're missing a guy like Brevin Nazem, which he was one of them guys, when he would be in your presence, even if he wasn't, talking directly to you, he would drop a jewel. Something you could take home. When we don't have those type of guys around, the level drops, just a little bit. Because there's still some around, but when you lose a guy like that, yeah, you definitely, you know what I mean, the level drop a little bit. Do you feel added pressure on you to take it to the next level, being that you're the next up and coming trainer in Philly? No, it's never pressure. It's never pressure because no! Because I've realized, <laughs> see, I got motherfuckers like him, see? Oh, no, you're interviewing a killer. <laughs> so, look, it's never pressure because I realized a long time ago, this is the game I'm going to be in. This is, my, this is my life. You know what I'm saying? I realized that because I don't do anything else. I don't, I'm not interested in anything else. I mean, I had my little fun. I fuck with the hookah after the gym. You know what I mean? A little stuff like that, but... I don't go nowhere, I don't hang with no, just anybody. I'm not trying to be in nobody's face. I'm not an actor, I'm not a rapper. I'm strictly boxing. So there's no pressure because I do this shit every day. And you don't drink Starbucks. I don't drink Starbucks. But Starbucks is for stars for bucks. No. So you know I always gotta have Starbucks a cup of money. Suckers, man. You suckers drink that shit, man. <laughs> you lattes and shit like that. I don't even know how to pronounce some of that shit. <laughs> That's the thing, man. That Listen, corny. When you go in and spend They say the you want a venti. Or, or they don't say a medium, small, medium, large. What they say? Yeah, cause listen, if you ever went to an expensive restaurant, right? Yeah. 
Guess what they got in there? They got some fucking asparagus with walnuts and all these things. <laughs> like, I don't want that. I just want the noodles. But the, the extra ingredient or the extra name, give it an inexpensive sound. <laughs> that shit corny. That's it. It's but that's corny, corny, but it's good. I like it. And it's my method for Starbucks. It's for stars with bucks. <laughs> yeah! I might not be there yet, but if I keep that mindset, <laughs> I'm going to get there. <laughs> Yeah, you're not supposed to drink coffee. Yeah, you, yeah, you're a boxing yeah. trainer. Hey, listen. Former boxer. I, I, I enjoy my career. I love my career. Put I, I put the work in. I did the best I can for myself. Listen, once I broke my neck and I decided that, fuck it, I'm going to just be a trainer, guess where I went? I went to the corner store and got a Mountain Dew. <laughs> you know I mean? It was time to train. Yeah. It never been. It be like that though. I gain yeah, weight. I'm yeah. 210 pounds now. Like it be like that. You train. I've been training since I was 12. So a lot of yeah. strain on your body. Put a whole lot of work in, man. A lot of strain on your body, bro. Making weight. 11 you know, time sure. national champion. Yeah. 15 one and one as a pro. Yeah. I was. I had the opposite career. I think I paid my dues. My 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 career was upside down. I was doing all the wrong things. That's but I still you made it upside down. But I still was learning though. I learned and, a lot about the and, game. And but I just but I just was doing all the wrong things. The crazy thing is people think like to be a good trainer you have to have a good background in boxing, but not not really because been having a, a messed up background or a, a lopsided background in boxing, you know the things that you shouldn't have done. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, experience. And you know the experience of being in there on the losing end. See, that's funny, because look, a guy who always won, not saying real, but I'm saying a guy who always won, he don't know what it's like to, to, lose. to, to yeah, adversity, to, adversity yeah, exactly. to come out of adversity. So yeah, motherfucker know. getting assaulted in that ring, and they don't know what they're telling them. They, they they looking at the fight like, what's wrong with you? The crazy with thing Jack. is, <laughs> the crazy thing is, look, about three years ago, Sam Tia for Oceanique, uh, yeah. so Foster. they call Oceanique Foster, and Oceanique was A and O, right? But he was an Al Heyman fighter, and that's when Al Heyman was feeding all these guys thoughts, you know what I'm saying? So they said, you think we should take this fight? I said, Hell yeah, we taking this fight. Yeah. They said, why you why you so uh, adamant about taking the fight? I say because Oceanique never been tested. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. He used to hitting people and them people taking off running. Mm -hmm. Hitting people and them people falling and taking knee. Mm -hmm. Now, when he sees Sam Body in the other corner, first of all, he's going to be like, damn, that motherfucker's strong. Mm -hmm. right? Know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Secondly, when Sam go out there and make a miss a shot, he going to start thinking, damn, my last eight opponents ain't do that. Nah. And when Sam hit his ass back, he going to say, oh, yeah, this a real fight. Mm -hmm. Am I ready for this? He going to start second-guessing himself. And guess what? We beat Oceanique. And um, Oceanique has got become a very, very better fighter. Um, very interesting fighter. He started taking his career serious. Nothing to say about Oceanica. It's just, it's just a mindset. Boxing is uh, eighty percent mental, twenty percent physical. Mm. If your mind tell you you can do it, you can do it. Yeah. If you ever second guess yourself, just get the fuck out. Yeah, it's over. Now, um, you're one of the new generation of trainers, like Greg. Um, what's your thoughts on the passing of a legend like Brother Nazem? Man, this is so sad, man. So sad, so sad. Brother Nazem did a lot for the community. I, I actually met Brother Nazem um, first time ever is when I was working at the corner store. I used to sweep and pack up the sodas for him, refill the sodas in the refrigerator. And Brother Nazem used to have Rock and Tiger and Carl Dargan and Shark out there, how you doing, you know what I'm saying? And I, I was wondering, like, what the hell is this, you know what I'm saying? But he was teaching, he didn't only teach boxing, he taught life morals, mm -hmm. he taught uh, respect. He is, Philadelphia is losing a great legend, a great legend. Um, Brother Nazim done a lot for the community. Uh, my first fight, guess what? 
was in Kansas City with Reverend Nazem. He took me to the Silver Glove. Uh, I lost to No Needle De Nair. Um, a few months later, I fought No Needle De Nair in the uh, first round of uh, Junior Olympics. I beat him. You know what I'm saying? So, me and Brother Nazem got a lot of history. Mm -hmm. He could tell you a, a lot about me, and I can also tell you a lot about him. Some of the stuff that he might tell you about me was crazy. <laughs> that he didn't like it. <laughs> But it was it was just a great experience with Brother Nazim and traveling with him. And his passing is uh, is big on the city. Okay, thanks, y'all. I appreciate it.